Hi, Misha here, and we're here with a gun that actually got some attention at SHOT Show this year, 2019. This is ATI's, well, it's kind of marked uh, Galon, G-A-L-E-O-N, but it's, it's a Galil ARM. They have to kind of not use the Galil name because IWI still has a trademark on it. Century tried that about 10 years ago and uh, didn't get sued, but they had to quit using the Galil Sporter name. That's when they went to the Galani Sporter. And it's kind of interesting that as many people were excited about this as really it seemed to be because you can still get Galil Aces from IWI made in Israel for pretty good money, you know, 1200 bucks or so. But they are the modern style. And this, of course, is the classic 70s, 80s style. And I guess it just goes to show you people like classics. Now, this is built in the USA on a US milled receiver, machined receiver, with a US made 18 inch barrel. But really, the rest of the parts are surplus. IMI made in Israel. Now they probably weren't actually used in Israel. They were probably a foreign contract in South America or somewhere. So they're going to have wear. You can see the pistol grip especially. And of course they're built here. Buttstock, pistol grip, bolt carrier, dust cover, handguard, gas tubes, gas block. This has the early style M16 birdcage flash hider. Later they would go to the Galil ported type. It does have the spot for the bipod here, but no bipod. It's got the bayonet lug. It is <clears throat> it does have the right retainers, so if you found a bipod, you could install it. But this one at least does not have the carry handle, which some didn't. Folding stock. It has the, this one we received has the rear night sight, but not the front. The holes there. Even if it had them, they wouldn't be active. And it ships with one 30 round Tapco mag and actually in a normal but decent pretty good hard case. So we're gonna take it to the range, run some rounds through it, and then have some final thoughts. But first let's do some magazine test fitting because one of the big deals about the Century Galanis from back in the day was they were magazine picky. A lot of mags wouldn't fit them. They had a real tight mag well. So let's see how this uh, ATI receiver and gun stack up there. Alright, before we get started, I thought we would do test fitting of mags. First time we've tried putting any mags in this, so we'll see. This is the Tapco mag it came with. Easy. Very minimal play. And I've got some Israelis here. Let's try a 35 round Israeli. I can get it out one handed. It's one of my pretty good condition mags. It's actually a pre band from the 80s. A little tight, but okay, that's a little tight. Quite latching. That's pretty common with these. You know, I noticed this happened with the old centuries, too. They were real tight with some, especially when good condition. So, let's give that one more try, just to see. Make sure it's in there. It's almost going, I think, with a little bit of convincing, but let's 
I don't want to get a mag stuck in right now. Let's try the 50 that's in this pouch. Kind of the same result. They're almost latching, but not quite. I mean, they're in there. I might try shooting it anyway. So yeah, it looks like with these original mags, they're going to be tight fitting, at least when the mags are in good shape. Just for fun, let's see how it does with these uh, ore lights. These fit tight in almost every Galil, so I'm not expecting a lot. Yeah. That's not surprising. Grab going in. I'm going to force it. Should have grabbed another steel when I came out here, but it's all right. Tight too. Yeah, that one's real tight, but like I said, these tend to run very tight, so I'm not shocked at all. I'm a little shocked that the steel didn't go better, so is well we'll get to shooting and see what happens next all right so out of the box you really only wanted to take the tapco everything else seemed to be pretty tight however the steel mags are going in they just weren't completely latching so there, there's probably hope there the or light, maybe not so much. All right, well, enough futzing around with mags and such. Let's uh, let's run some uh, rounds there. We have brass and steel. We have a PPU, wolf, brown bear, probably some silver bear. So we have, a, we have a few different types of ammo. Let's see if she runs. And we'll come back to the table for some final thoughts. ATI, misspell Galil, very first shots. We're going to try it with the steel mag, even though it wasn't fitting great. Worked. Hmm. Alright, since the steel 35 worked, let's try it with the 50. I think it's partially latching enough because it doesn't want to come out. So it seems like wood, it's not ideal, but it's working with the IMI mags. All right, I'm gonna let Jay give it a go. Was that a full uh, mag or? Not quite. Little jam there? Uh, yeah, it, uh, I overran the trigger. Ah, uh, yeah. So that makes more or less 50, 60 rounds good so far? Yep. So far. Alrighty. The uh, mag's locking out a little better, so I think Jay's right that it may wear in. Let's see how it goes. All right, back with the ATI. Hammer follow again. That was me. Okay. 
Galil. Since it's wearing in, we were able to get an Orlite mag to lock in, so let's see if it'll shoot. Seems to shoot. And ATI again. Last mag of the day for the Gleal. So that was a hundred percent. All right, got to be honest with you. Towards the end there that day, especially with that full, well, forty rounds out of fifty in the long mag, I was really hope wishing for a bipod. It would have been nice. The bipod that the ARM originally was made for and with wasn't great, but it's functional. Anyway, as Jay commented, and I agree, we were both pleasantly surprised. We at least put 300 rounds through it total, I'd say. Not a single stoppage, except for Jay trying to bump fire and he was overrunning the trigger. And that was because this is the original trigger from Israel. But if you notice, it's not as far forward as normal on a Galil. What they've done, they've worked it to be a shorter pull and a bit of a lighter pull. Which is nice, because this is a good machine trigger. But the flip side is, because of their working on it, you are going to run the risk of overrunning the trigger, as he did. And a military gun, this isn't possible because the added battery safety would prevent it. But in a semi-auto, because of the way the ATF rules out of battery safeties as auto seers, we are not legally allowed to put it in. Luckily, when the hammer followed the bolt, home before the bolt was fully locked it did not have enough inertia to set off a primer potentially in theory you can have an out of battery discharge with any AK because it doesn't have the out of battery safety but in practice it doesn't seem to be the case it's never really happened but thanks ATF for making things not safer for us yeah the same thing goes for FALs also, the mags improved. The, uh, the steel mags started to fit better after some wear in. The catch, I think just some of the finish maybe wore off the catch. So I think if you, at most, might have to file just a teensy bit off the top of the mag catch or off the bottom of the mag lug in the back. The important part is the front lug was fitting fine. It was the back, and the mag was fully seating. It's just this wasn't going fully forward. But as, we, as the day went on, it got better and better as things kind of wore in. And as you saw, we were even able to get one or light to lock in towards the end there. So, improvement, definitely. Trigger is very nice. Uh, the folding stock is quite solid. Much more so than the majority of the Century Galanis, I recall. It does fold and unfold easy, but it's still quite stiff. This top cover... Fits very tight, no play, but I was able to take it off and put it on by hand, just honestly just barely, but that's good. It does have the extended later style takedown button that goes out a little further. The Gas tube fits well, with just tiny bit of play. Handguard has a tiny bit of play, which is again normal for a Galil. Jay said accuracy was good. I mean, not that we were testing it for accuracy. Today was just about reliability, frankly. Machining 
of the receiver. It's kind of the slab side, no lightning cut, but seems perfectly fine. Aside from normal wear from just use and also the wear that the original parts already had, ATI seems to have done a very competent job of this gun. It is reliable. Now what happened with the Century early on when they were using the Ohio Rapid Fire receivers for the Golanis, they had heat treat issues. Some parts of the receivers were too soft, but many of the parts, many of the receivers were overheat treated, so they were over hard. So what happened, your ejector would chip away or break entirely, and the mortises where your bolt locking lugs would go into the receiver would chip away and deform. And the only really way to tell if that's going to happen, if your heat treats right or wrong, is just to keep shooting something. So that's what we'll do, and then we'll do an inspection later to see how it's looking. But so far, so good. The parts are nicely tightly fitted, but not obnoxiously so. The finish is a nice, even phosphate. Better than expected. So far, I would say this is a... a a market improvement over the Galani. More care and attention was put into its assembly. And overall, I'd say it was built with nicer condition parts. It's still not IMI quality from the 80s, but did anyone really expect it to be? These are retailing for about a thousand bucks, eleven hundred dollars, somewhere in that area. Not bad considering a pre band is. Well over a thousand, uh, $3,000, maybe even $3,500 for a true ARM type. It's worth pointing out that a lot of your pre-bands actually have a 16-inch barrel, not 18, and do not have a bayonet lug. So, yeah. As a shooter, this might turn out to be something. Maybe nothing that'll be uber collectible. I just thought it was interesting that people were really excited about this at SHOT Show. I really didn't know what reception would be because, again, we have the Ace, but I guess there's enough people that really want the Retro that even though this is built with a U.S. receiver and barrel and used old Israeli parts, that's still interesting to them. Eh, we'll see. But yeah, we were pleasantly surprised. It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, recoil was very manageable. Uh, it obviously got hot, but because of the way the barrel is designed, it um, cooled off quite rapidly because of the thin barrel and also because the underside is open. But yeah, if you'd like to know more about the history of the Galil, we have a couple of videos on that, so check those out. We also have videos on the Ace. Oh, eh. sorry, it almost just goes without saying, but this is chambered for 5.56 NATO 223 Remington, it'll fire either one. I am not sure if it has the 1 and 7 or the 1 and 9 twist. Original guns, a lot of the pre bends have a 1 and 12, but some later ones will have a 1 and 7. I do not believe the barrel is chrome lined, and I believe the barrel is from Green Mountain, but don't hold me to that. This is kind of an initial review. But we'll be back with more. We're going to keep shooting this. I figure in video 2 we'll compare it with the ARM. And also field strip it and do a, an inspection for any kind of cracks or uh, deformations. How's that sound? So yeah, check back for that in a couple of weeks and we'll go from there. Well, this is Misha. We appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. We'll catch you very soon. Next time.